Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. I then read them back to you, making it into a motion comic per se. I added voices and some music, and it, the whole point is to just let you understand your favorite pop culture icons better. But today, today we're gonna be celebrating Christmas with an amazing Batman Christmas tale. Batman Noel, enjoy. Gotham City is quiet under a blanket of falling snow. The night is cold, warmed by the occasional light shining through a window or blinking Christmas decorations. The quiet is broken as Batman lands with a heavy whoop on the rooftop, his boots crunching in the snow as he takes off at a run. In the distance, the bat signal shines through the night. It's Christmas Eve in Gotham. Down on the streets, Bob is walking along, bag slung over his shoulder with a coat and scarf pulled tight against the cold. Sweat glistens on his face despite the chill. And he looks up into the night sky as a bright light is shining above him. Bob comes to the Jack in the Box, an old boarded up toy store with creepy dolls in the window. And he places the bag on the ground. And the quiet of the city streets is broken by his faint knocks on the closed up door. Above him, the Batman leaps across the rooftop, snow crunching beneath him. The sound causes Bob to look up, missing the gloved hand that reaches through the boards to take the bag. Looking back, he sees a neatly wrapped gift replacing his old bag. He doesn't hesitate, and he takes that gift, and he walks away in the cold. From the rooftops, Batman descends, his cape flapping like wings in the cold night air. Bob tries to run, fear giving his muscles strength. A battering snaps around his foot, tripping him, sending the gift flying, and it breaks open on the sidewalk, money spilling and spiraling into the winter wind. Behind him, Batman approaches. Please. Don't. I got a kid. Bob pleads as the Dark Knight pulls him up by his scarf. The big man begins to threaten him, his eyes full of fury. Tell me where he is. You won't lie if you want to walk out of here. But Bob didn't know. He just got a note to drop off the bag and pick up the money. He's never even met the clown. Batman raises his fist. The story doesn't make sense. How was the Joker going to contact him to get the money? It was going to send another note. With instructions, Bob continues to plea. His hands thrown up to protect him from Batman's anger. Batman releases him, turning away from the criminal. Consider yourself lucky that you make better live bait than jail bait. Bob was lucky and didn't want to waste it. Scrambling back to his feet, he ran through the snowy city, his breath steaming in the cold night air. He was so quick to get away that he didn't notice the blinking tracer planted on his scarf. Back in the toy store, the wood splinters and cracks as Batman kicks it in. The building is quiet. The snow falls through the exposed doorway, mixing in with the dust of years of disuse. Batman's light plays on the doll, strange clowns and grinning horses. He spins as a large green-haired clown comes at him from the left. But it's just another toy, with a note taped to its hideous grin. Another joke goes right over your head. Too slow, old man. Gritting his teeth in anger, Batman crumples the note. Another game. Somewhere else in the city, Bob has finally gotten home. The apartment is small and run down. The paint cracked and peeling. Yet this is their home. Bob comes through the door hard and fast, still feeling like there is something right behind him, and his son Timmy comes excitedly forward, trying to show his father the world's saddest Christmas tree, proud of the ornaments that he made from the junk in their home. Tim, not now, okay? Bob yells as he peers through the peephole. Tim turns away, his mouth sagging in a frown at his father's harsh words. Feeling bad, Bob turns from the door, trying to show his son love, because now he knows he made him feel bad. The tree really isn't so bad, and the ornaments make it nice. Timmy really wants to make a Batman ornament. Why would you want a Batman on the Christmas tree? He can be scary. Bob tries to explain, but Timmy knows that Batman is one of the good guys. He only hurts people who have done bad things. Bob stares sadly out the window into the snowy Christmas Eve night. Sometimes, even the good people do bad things, he says sadly. The snow continues to fall on Wayne Manor and deep underground in a cave, colder than the winter landscape outside, Bruce is watching his computers, a cough filling his lungs. Bats flitter overhead as Alfred brings his charge a drink, frowning at the costume thrown haphazardly on the floor of the cave. I would say that you've caught something of a cold running around outside in the freezing night. I'm not sick, Alfred. <coughs> it is, after all, impossible for the Dark Knight to get the sniffles. Despite his concern for Bruce, Alfred questions why he watches Bob and Timmy on his cameras. Bruce explains that he's just waiting for the clown to go after Bob, to get the money that Bob just left on the streets earlier. Alfred doesn't approve of using the man as bait especially since he has a young son that would be at risk. I take the risk that he will raise his child exactly like him, Bruce scoffs. Alfred reminds Bruce of another young boy that he took a risk on, and he leaves him alone in the cave. Memories of the past flood Bruce's mind, memories of leaping off rooftops with his young sidekick. He was younger then, full of hope. Bruce looks over his shoulder, his eyes falling on the Robin costume in the armory. For a moment, he almost sees the man who once wore it. 
His eyes glance at Bruce, but no, it's gone. It's just a costume, a ghost from the past. A warning of the future. Despite the chill, Bruce sweats, his coughs interrupting the silence of the cave. The signal shines brightly in the dark night sky, with Jim Gordon trying to light his pipe to ward off the cold. Behind him, Batman appears as he always does. There is no new news on the Joker, but they do have a new tip. A certain cat burglar is supposedly knocking off Sprang's auction house tonight. She claims to have some information, and you know she'll only talk to you. Gordon looks concerned as Batman coughs in the night air. Waste of time, she's only interested in playing games. Batman descends into the night, his cape flapping behind him. Outside of Sprague's auction house, Batman waits, watching over his city, his thoughts drifting back to the cave, to the spirit he saw. It was nothing. The night was no different than any other, Christmas Eve or not. The clock struck one, and the first visitor appeared. She was beautiful, clad in black, running across the rooftop. Batman descended his cloak like wings. She stopped, smiling over her shoulder. I could hear you breathing up there. Getting old, or is it just the frosty night air? Selina, I'm not in the mood. It's been years, and they constantly play this game back and forth, yet tonight it's different, despite what Bruce tells himself. I will not play games with you tonight, he hisses, pulling her in close. Where is he? But Selina wants to play games, wants to play their game. Decades of the two going back and forth, the fun that they've had. It was never for fun. <coughs> Sick people like you think that this is some sort of... Bruce is interrupted as Selena's whip lashes out, catching him by the arm. The two trade blows with Selena venting her anger. She cuts Bruce across the mouth and she runs and Batman gives chase. The cold air flying past them as Batman chases her across the rooftops. It's as if she's showing him people and places from his past. His early days when he was a younger man, full of life and vigor. Fighting crime alongside Robin, young and naive. Catwoman leaps, her feet barely landing on the slippery snow, with Batman following his hand, reaching for a gargoyle. But that statue breaks, and Batman falls. The streets and alleys reaching up for him. He lands, his body racked with coughs, and his first visitor leaves him. The clock strikes two. In the windswept, snowy darkness of Gotham, he seemed to almost glow. The man from another world, Superman. He floats there, his hand reaching out to Batman on the ground. Need a hand? Looks like you could use one. I'm <coughs> fine. Up past your bedtime, aren't you? Batman asks, struggling to his feet. His friend looks at him concerned, his vision taking in Bruce's condition on the inside. He should be inside, but Bruce didn't care for Clark's medical advice. He just wants him to leave. Superman once again holds out his hand. Just let me give you a lift to your car, he offers. Batman agrees on one condition. The two stand on the rooftops overlooking Bob's apartment. They watch as Timmy comes in with a hand-drawn Christmas card for his father, a look of happiness on his face. Batman is still waiting for Joker's arrival. Superman doesn't approve of using this man as bait, especially with his son involved. If the father is involved, he could go to prison, Clark observes, but is quickly cut off by Bruce. Then we decrease the surplus criminal population. He has no emotion in this statement. What about the boy? I'm going to scare him. Scare him so badly that he doesn't ever follow in his father's footsteps. But Superman doesn't think that this is the way it should be done. Lifting Batman off the ground, he takes him to his car. Yet first, he shows him the city. Visions of good people who live there. The kindness and the happiness that Bruce has seemingly forgotten that he was fighting for. The little things that people did for each other in the present, everyday life. Life didn't involve crime and capes. He brought him to Gordon's house to show him that Gordon truly did believe in him, but thought that he would one day cross the line. Bruce always thought that he was the hero, but apparently not everyone thought so. Clark finally drops him off in the Batmobile. Good night, Bruce feel better. And with that, the second spirit leaves him. Batman uses his remote to activate the Batmobile, but with the push of a button, the car explodes. Batman flashes in and out of consciousness, and as the third spirit visits him, he can hear the familiar laugh. The Joker drags Batman through the snow, his vision blurring, and Batman sees the sign of the graveyard above him. The further he drags him, Batman doesn't have the strength to fight back. A hideous grin, and then Batman is falling into the grave. With the grave being bottomless, he plummets into the endless black, and in that black he sees visions of the future, a world where he has gone and left Gotham unguarded. Others have taken up his cause, but instead of leaving them with a message of hope, Bruce has left them with anger and hatred. Gangs in the street are using his symbol to instill fear in all who they deem criminals. The visions cloud and they warp, and he sees Gordon on trial for aiding a vigilante. He sees Alfred watching the auction of Wayne Manor, a vision of people buying and selling his property, no longer even thinking of the man who once lived there. Bruce Wayne and Batman left the world with nothing but fear and anger, and no one would care that he was gone. No one would miss or mourn him. But Batman's life returns. The visions reside. Batman struggles from his grave, his fist punching through the freshly dug earth. Back in Bob's apartment, 
Timmy runs to the door when he hears a knock. Santa, is that you? The hideous grin isn't all Saint Nick. Ho, ho, ho! The Joker cackles as he pushes through the door, his face dangerously close to Timmy's. Oh, I know! I know! You were expecting the big guy in red! It was all the same, though! I have a big bag of presents, too! In the next room, Bob is hiding, bat in hand. He needs to do something. The Joker begins to pull toys from his bag, and he places them on the table. A gun, a grenade, and a wrench. Timmy calls to his daddy with these words. Bob comes out swinging. The Joker's fast, though he ducks under the swing, and he pops Bob across the jaw with his wrench. Now the gun is stuck to Bob's face as the Joker begins to question him about the missing money. His laughter fills the apartment as Timmy tries to pull him off his father. And that's when the window explodes inward as Batman launches through it, knocking the table, the saddest Christmas tree, and the Joker to the floor. The gun falls into the grasp of Bob's hand and he stands pistol pointed at the Joker on the floor. No! Batman yells his hands up. You are not a criminal. Show your son what kind of man you are. He pleads. Bob hesitates his hands, shaking, and the Joker eggs him on. Show him what a hero is. Batman offers one last time, and the gun goes loose in Bob's hand. Later, the police have taken the Joker into custody, with Gordon standing outside watching Bob with his son, safe. Looking up, he sees the billowing black wings of the city's dark guardian angel. And later in the cave, Alfred smiles as he finds Bruce asleep in front of the Bat computer. Christmas Day, events of the night before changed Bruce. In the night, he had found some hope that he had lost over the years. Bob and Timmy received a Christmas tree and a dinner, courtesy of Wayne Enterprises. And Timmy sees in his father that heroes really do exist. All is right in Gotham City for the day. And there you have it. Me and my buddy Batman would like to wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa, and I'm sure there's more holidays that I don't know about, but I'm trying to cover it down. And if, you, and, if I, and if you feel offended, I apologize. Happy holidays to you. This is currently going up on Christmas Eve, so I hope you have a wonderful time in front of you. And if you want more of just videos about comic books, about video games, about movies, TV shows, whatever, please consider subscribing to our channel. We make a lot of them over here. And you can also find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash eligiblemonster, where we stream every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We stream a lot over there. It's a lot of fun. We enjoy ourselves. We'd love to have you over there in general. Now, I have a question for you. What is your favorite Christmas meal. I want you to let me know in the comments down below what it is that you prefer to eat on Christmas. For me? You're asking me? Oh, I like a big roast turkey. Like, I like to do like a second Thanksgiving. That, that's what I do. Second Thanksgiving. But we're not doing that this year. I think it's like a ham or something. I don't know. Either way, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.